so today i will be discussing a very important disease that is called a celiac disease so celiac disease is also called a celiac sprue so it is also called a celiac sprue and sprue is a word which is related to malabsorption that's why it is also called as malabsorption syndrome while it is also known as gluten sensitive enteropathy so it is also known as gluten sensitive enteropathy gluten is actually protein and sensitive means this disease is sensitive to gluten while enteropathy means entero is related to intestine while patho means pathology or disease so it is a disorder which is related to small intestine now but how we will be defining the celiac disease more easily so actually it is a autoimmune disease it is a autoimmune disorder of proximal small intestine in which there is an ability to digest gluten so what is glu what is celiac disease and celiac disease actually it is a autoimmune disorder of proximal small intestine in which there is an ability to digest the gluten now first we should understand what is gluten so gluten is is gluten is actually it is a protein and it is present in wheat so gluten is protein which is present in wheat rye barley and oats and how you can easily remember this for that we have a mnemonic that is bro so while b stand for the barley r stand for the rye o stand for oats and w stand for wheat now actually in our setup mainly the celiac disease it is due to the intake of wheat now let's suppose if there is a patient and if there is a patient and one is take the gluten in the form of wheat so what happens now there is a patient and they take the and one take the gluten in the form of wheat so what happens that gluten it is ultimately reached to the small intestine now when, once it reaches to the small intestine the small intestine take the gluten as a foreign ad antigen so small intestine take the gluten take gluten in the form of r it take the gluten as a foreign antigen and small intestine it produce antibodies against antigen and antibodies are are made against the gluten so there is antigen antibody reaction occur antigen antibody reaction occur in the small intestine so as we know that in the small intestine there is a very specialized structures are present that is called as villi so when the antigen and antibody reaction occur in the small intestine so the, there is villi destruction occur so there is villi destruction occur and as we know that villi are responsible for absorption in the small intestine so if the, there is destruction occur in the villi so there will be malabsorption so there will be malabsorption and that's how this is a celiac disease and it is also known as malabsorption syndrome i repeat how actually the celiac disease is occur basically when one is taking the gluten so that gluten it reach to the small intestine now that small intestine it take the gluten in the form of foreign antigens and making antibodies against those specific antigen so the antigen antibody reaction occur 
in the small intestine so because of that there is destruction occur in the very specialized structure of the small intestine that is villi so upon the destruction of villi it lead to the malabsorption and that's why it is also known as malabsorption syndrome now let's talk about the certain triggering factors so what are the triggering factors behind the celiac diseases so there are a lot of triggering factors but we will be discussing the main triggering factors so the main triggering factors are environmental triggering factors the genetic factors and autoimmunity now what are the triggering factors the major triggering factors are that is environmental factors here the serous containing toxic proteins are the actually triggering source for the celiac diseases so the serous containing toxic proteins like in the form of gliadin protein in the form of gliadin protein secondin protein are hard in protein so serious containing toxic proteins like gliadin secondin are hard in and what are the other triggering factors that is the most important triggering factors and that are genetic factors so there are very important human leukocyte antigen are associated with it like let's say if a patient has an association of human leukocyte antigen dq2 r if a patient has an association of human leukocyte antigen dq8 so they are more prone to develop a disease of celiac disease so it's very very important that what are the genetic uh, what are the genetic uh, source for the celiac disease that is human leukocyte antigen dq2 and dq8 so it is important second is certain autoimmunity are also considered as a triggering factors and that is why that is because of due to loss of that is because of loss of mucosal barrier functions so till now i discussed the three important triggering factors in the form of environmental factors genetic factors and autoimmunity so in the environmental factors the serous containing protein is very important and the genetic factors the association of dq2 and dq8 is very important and in the autoimmunity it is mainly due to the loss of mucosal barrier functions so now let's talk about what are the signs and symptoms of a patient f1 is suffering from the celiac disease so usually it is presented between the age of 6 month and 2 year in a child and when the baby introduce the when the gluten is introduced into the baby body now actually what are the signs and symptoms the signs and symptom usually presented between the 6 month and 2 year when gluten is introduced into the baby now actually what is the main symptom that is diarrhea so the diarrhea is the main symptom in case of celiac disease and why it is so because the neutron is not digested so the neutron is not digested so the feeding content it is passed with the fecal matter because of malabsorption so that's why there will be diarrhea also the patient is manifested with the abdominal distension and abdominal cramps so there will be abdominal distension there will be abdominal cramp also there is stetoria stetoria means fats in the stool so also there will be stetoria and there will be anorexia 
muscle wastings and the most important feature is that what is the characteristic uh, of stool in this child so the characteristic of the stool of this child is there is undigested food in the stool so there will be bad smell in the stool so there will be pale foul smelling stool of these babies so the, this is very important that what is the characteristic of the stool in case of celiac disease that is pale foul smelling stools so the major signs and symptoms are diarrhea abdominal distension abdominal cramps there will be steatorrhea anorexia muscle wasting and the most important is the characteristic of the stool in the form of pale foul smelling stool of the child now let's discuss the investigation option that how actually we can evaluate a disease if one is suffering from celiac disease now what is the investigation option so in the investigation the blood tests are very important blood test is important to measure the antibodies secondly the biopsy is important the biopsy of biopsy of small intestine is important biopsy of small intestine is important and the biopsy of small intestine will show us that there is villus atrophy occur there will be villus destruction or there will be villus atrophy so for the villus atrophy we will be doing the biopsy of small intestine and it is very important that the biopsy of small intestine is considered as a gold standard test in case of celiac disease so what is the gold standard test for celiac disease that is biopsy of small intestine secondly what are the diagnostic test what are the diagnostic test in case of this disease so that is serum tissue transglutaminase antibody test and iga endomysial antibody test so the what are the serological tests in case of celiac disease that is serum tissue transglutaminase antibody test and iga endomysial antibody test and these both tests it is considered as a the most screening test for celiac disease so it is the most important and diagnostic test for the celiac disease now what are actually the treatment option in case of celiac disease let's discuss the what is the treatment for the for this child now the only treatment is as such there is no any medical treatment is available for such a disease so there is strict there is what is the treatment there there will be strict gluten free diet is recommended to these babies so there is no any medical treatment option is available but uh, the only option is that is strict gluten free diet is recommended meaning the patient need to avoid the gluten containing foods like if we talk about as i told you earlier that there are certain uh, gluten containing substances like bro that is barley re oats and wheat so the patient must be avoided the gluten containing substances and for uh, there is a, another question for how many times or for how many times the a patient should avoid the gluten containing substances so it is very important that the gluten containing substances must be avoided by the pa by the patient for life long so for how many time that is for life long condition so patient must be avoided the gluten containing substances but also you can give the vitamins as well you can give the vitamins in the form of fat soluble vitamins like if there is like if we uh, talk about vitamin a vitamin d e and k 
so you can give the fat soluble vitamins to these babies also you can give the folic acids and iron supplements you can give the folic acid and iron supplements in order to prevent the electrolyte imbalance so to in order to monitor the electrolyte imbalance you need to give the folic acid and iron 